I'm Katie and welcome back to Tasty's Hack or Hassle. On this show, Tasty producers try to make a recipe testing a bunch of hacks in a row that have been collected by our friend Amy. Now, I am not an expert, I am not an Italian grandma, so please don't come for me, but I do love to make pasta in my spare time. So today we're just gonna test out these hacks and see which ones are helpful and just like which ones are a total hassle. So today I'm gonna to be making a classic spaghetti and meatballs, much like the one we have here. It's got spaghetti, it has a rich tomato sauce, and on top we've got some cute little meatballs. And we're gonna be making fresh pasta by hand. All right, so let's get into this. The first thing we're gonna do is add some salt to flour. And I'm doing this in the bowl because our first hack is to make a well in a bowl. So normally, you would turn this out onto your surface and then you would make a well, which is gonna take your wet ingredients. But we're doing it in a bowl, and this is actually a hack that I've done before because often my wells collapse and it becomes really messy. This hack, we're just gonna make it in the bowl and this way it can't collapse outside of itself. And six egg yolks. And then we're gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil. So first I'm just gonna combine all the egg yolks and get those all broken up. And this makes for like a smoother, less clumpy dough. We've gotten this pretty well incorporated. It's to get real chunky boy now. So I'm gonna put this out onto the counter now. There's no pretty way to do this. Oh, you know what is a pretty way to do this? This is not a hack. But you can use a bench scraper. Sometimes not all of the flour is gonna incorporate into your eggs and your oil. So what's not coming together, like that didn't naturally cling to this, we're just gonna get rid of it. Rejection. So the next hack is a kneading hack. So the traditional kneading is you go away from yourself and you bring it back. But we're gonna do the heart method is the hack. And this is actually from a Tasty 101. So you make a heart shape, you go like this. And then you go like this. I think this hack, it just depends on like what you would like to do. I like that it's a heart, like it's romantic. <laughs> I would say that I prefer the traditional method, which is this way. <laughs> so basically I'm gonna just keep kneading this till the gluten is really developed. And when you press your finger into the dough, it springs back. So we're just gonna wrap this in plastic. We'll just let this sit out at room temperature for about 30 minutes to an hour. Pasta recipes can vary. Some are very dry, some are really sticky, so I floured my surface. I'm gonna cut him into eights so that we don't have too long of sheets. And then the dough that you're not working with, just make sure you keep that covered because you don't want your pasta dough to dry out. So we just wanna make sure we get this nice and thin because if you send it through the pasta roller when it's too thick, it'll break. So now we've got a pasta roller. I have a cool electric one and we're just having this on setting, the first setting, which is one. And you don't want to pull your pasta, like you just let it come out on its own. We're going to fold it into a square like this and we'll just feed it through again and this is going to help get a better shape. So now we're going to go up to two. So as you go higher, it gets thinner. And now we'll go to three, we're at four. And we're going to go to five is the thinnest that we'll roll it. Okay. And we've got our sheet. You want it so that you can see your fingers through in it. It's nice and translucent. And I'm just gonna repeat this with our remaining dough and then we'll move on to cutting this into spaghetti. Now it's time to cut it. I have added a spaghetti cutter attachment, extruder, what do you call it? I don't know, it cuts spaghetti. We're gonna turn on our machine. This is my favorite part. Some guys might fall down that are not the same length. You don't have to be a hero trying to catch them. Ta-da! I don't know why it makes me so happy. Now here's our next hack. We could put this on a drying rack, but since we're gonna eat our pasta relatively quickly, we don't really need to do that. So the hack is you dust up some flour on these guys. We're gonna do this before we set it down because we don't want them to stick together. And you can set them down here and then just nest them. And I actually like to add a a little bit more flour in here, and then you twirl. Cute, they're like little egg nests. I highly recommend this hack because you don't really need to buy the drying rack unless you're gonna be drying your pasta overnight. But if you're gonna eat it that night, you really don't need that extra gadget. We're gonna set these guys aside and let them sit for 30 minutes while we work on the sauce. I feel like this is a metaphor for my life. Like, you know, like when I start off on something, it's not so great, but it can get better. I can get better. <laughs> So now we're moving on to the sauce. I'm actually gonna be using jar sauce and you're gonna find out why. But the first thing we need to do is prep some garlic for this sauce. And we have like way too many garlic hacks to try, but I also love garlic, so I'm excited. Basically you break up your garlic. If you can see, they all still have their little peels on them. So the first one we're gonna try is you take your garlic cloves and you shake them between two metal bowls. So let's see. 
very musical. <laughs> Is that enough? Some of it's still on, but for the most part, these guys are pretty good. That's a pretty good hack. There's another version of this hack where it's in a Tupperware container. So let's see if that actually works faster. One, two, three. Ooh, okay, we have one that's done. The other four are not as good. So this one, maybe it's because this top is rubber. The next one we saw on TikTok, you cut off the base, well, in the video, it doesn't come apart like this. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try that again. I am now equipped with a serrated knife. Hopefully these teeth are gonna help us out. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just say no, it's a hassle. <laughs> the whole bottom is supposed to cut off and then you're supposed to just press down and then magically all of the peel comes off, but it's very much has all its clothes on. So to protect my hands for this one, we don't know if it works. Obviously that last one didn't. We're gonna use gloves and a paring knife. And the idea is that you just stick this knife in and then you keep going in a circle. This one's kind of dangerous, so we'll just cue disclaimer right here. Here we go. So they're going in at an angle and they're kind of like pulling it towards them and then it magically comes out. That did not happen for me. Okay, as things are coming out, it's easier to do, but what I am still noticing is that it's not actually like how you shake it in the bowl and then you have all of the, the peel gone. That's still there. Like in the video, this person is rapidly doing it. It looks effortless and they're very good at it. Maybe I'm just not good, but there were a lot of comments that said this didn't work. I kind of am on the side with the comments. So we're gonna say hassle. So I'm just gonna mince up this garlic and we'll move on to the next hack. So now we're gonna be making our sauce, which is our next hack. We're gonna upgrade this jarred sauce. So the first thing we'll do is heat up some olive oil and then we will saute our four cloves of garlic. You just wanna cook it so it gets a little tender and you can start to smell and it's fragrant. I would wear garlic as a perfume. Is that weird? Probably. We're gonna now add balsamic vinegar. So this is gonna deglaze the pan, but it's also gonna add like a brightness, more acidity and some sweetness. So now we will add our jarred pasta. This is about 20 ounces, a half a cup of heavy cream, which I like this idea. It's just gonna add some richness to our sauce. I think it's pretty common that people will do this with a jar of sauce. So far, I really like this hack. I feel like it's a good time-saving hack. So the next thing we have to do is bring this up to a simmer. So while this is simmering, we're gonna move on to making meatballs. Okay, so first what we're gonna do is add some beef and some pork. It's not glamorous, folks. And then a little tip for my friend Matt, add some ricotta. This just adds a lot of moisture. And then we'll add some milk. Get your breadcrumbs in there. Parmesan, of course. And the eggs are just gonna help bind all of this together. And then we're just gonna get in there with our hands and squish it all together. <laughs> so our next hack is gonna involve this, an egg carton. I'm as afraid as you are, and it's gonna go in the oven, so we're all afraid. You cannot forget seasoning, so let me just add that in real fast. We're gonna just add some salt here and some pepper. So this hack is an Alton Brown hack. When you cook these in the oven, a lot of fat drains off them and grease and it like pools at the bottom. And so the carton is supposed to absorb all of that grease and make, you know, make less greasy meatballs. So I'm just gonna use this ice cream scoop here. This just makes sure all your meatballs are around the same size. We just set it in and that's what we're doing. I don't know if this hack is a hassle or good yet, but we'll know as soon as it cooks. Let's go bake these at 425 for 20 minutes and see if this hack works. So you guys may notice we're outside and that's for safety reasons, just in case this carton catches fire for any reason in this oven. Outside, look how silly. <laughs> it's just like by itself. All right, so our oven is preheated to 425. I'm gonna put our bad boys in there. We're gonna wait 20 minutes. All right, everybody. I have let these cool a little bit so that I can handle them. We're gonna try to take these out. I'm a little nervous that they're gonna stick to the cardboard. My nervousness was right. They are sticking, okay, well, wow. Okay, so the tops got very crispy, but the bottoms are a little soggy. I don't know if this really works very well. Cause even if I take them out where they're piping hot, this base is still not crispy. It's kind of soggy. And you really want an all around crisp on your meatballs. Hassle. 
Okay, so we're near the end and I've got some boiling water here. So one of the hacks is to salt your water after it's been boiling. It takes longer if the salt is in there for it to boil. And also I guess in stainless steel pans, it can pit on the bottom of it and cause like a discoloration. The next hack is to avoid iodized salt. A lot of table salt is iodized salt, but we're using kosher. Iodized salt has a more metallic taste than kosher salt, so that's why just avoid it so that your pasta doesn't get like a metallic -y taste. So then the next one is to salt this till it's like seawater. So we'll see if this makes our pasta a lot more flavorful at the end. And I think it's a good technique. Okay, our sauce is simmering, our water is boiling. Let's cook our pasta. Fresh pasta cooks really quickly in about like two to three minutes, depending on the thickness of it. The next hack is says to stir the pasta for two minutes to keep it from sticking together. Fresh pasta is really delicate, so stirring this for two minutes, A, seems like a waste of time, but B, like also you could like damage your pasta. The next hack to test if our pasta is done, I feel like I've only seen this in movies, but we're gonna try it, is to throw a piece of the pasta at the wall and then if it sticks, then it's done. Okay, I think someone just wanted to throw pasta at a wall. Okay, so this is done according to that. It's been about a minute and a half and I don't wanna overdo it. So the next hack is to strain this using the colander like this. I don't know if this is easier. Okay, here we go. Ooh, steam, pasta facial. Do not rinse your pasta. I don't even think this is a hack. This is just life advice, don't rinse your pasta. I actually like that hack. That wasn't actually that bad. Most people would tell you not to do this hack, but Annie is forcing me to do it. <laughs> to keep your pasta from sticking to itself, you're gonna add olive oil. So why this hack exists, I guess, is to keep the pasta from sticking to itself, but what actually happens is it stops the sauce from adhering to the pasta. We'll see how much it affects the taste. So this next hack is, again, I think more of a technique. It's put your pasta in the sauce instead of your sauce in the pasta. And this way, the pasta actually like cooks a little bit more with the sauce and really melds together on the heat. You'll cook it till it's al dente, even just a little bit before it's al dente so that it can cook another minute in this sauce. We made it to the end. We did all the hacks. Now we get to eat. All right, this is my pasta next to our previous example. And honestly, they look pretty close. But now I've got to taste this to see if it's any good. So we salted that water to be as salty as the ocean. And I'm not getting like a hit of salt. Pasta's really flavorful. The noodles taste really yummy. I am, however, getting that like jar of sauce. Even though we added the cream, it definitely made that sauce taste richer. So adding the oil, it definitely seems like a little bit more oily, which is also maybe what I'm getting in the sauce itself is having that olive oil then with the pasta sauce. I don't think you need to do it, especially if you're putting your pasta right into the sauce after you drain it. You don't need to add olive oil. A lot of the hacks were fun or more techniques, but they were good. The meatballs though are the most disappointing to me. They just don't look good. They don't look appetizing, they're not crispy all around. So my favorite hacks from today were one, doing the well in the bowl, that was great, just had no accidents, which I usually do. Two, upgrading the jar of sauce. I actually think it's a really good hack just to save time, adding that cream, it just made that sauce really rich and yummy. And three, I actually really liked putting the colander over the pot and straining it that way. It was really quick and easy and I actually think it worked really well. Thank you guys for watching, I'm gonna go eat the rest of this pasta and I'll see you later, bye.